a year later, rewriting the world record again. I'm going to do a test called Lachlan's test to see if you've potentially done your ACL, which obviously isn't ideal, but I'll just do a quick test to see. So I'm just going to place my hand on your thigh and on your leg, and I'm just going to do a test to see whether it's potential ACL. Okay, I'll just compare. Yeah, so there's a really soft end feel and a lot of anterior translation on this side compared to the other one, which could just mean that I've suspected an ACL. Okay, well, so another test that I'm going to do is called a pivot shift test. I'm just going to place my hand on your knee and on your ankle. Is that okay? Yes. All right, so I just want to see how much movement I get at your tibia, which is in your legs, if I do that. Just relax for me. Now we're doing the problematic side, Will. Ooh, a lot more doing one last test, so I'm just going to pop your leg up and I'm just going to sit on your foot. Now this is just the draw test, so I'm just going to be pulling on your tibia here, just checking for the movement of that bone. So I'm just going to do it on your problematic side. Yeah, I can really feel there's more movement through here. Does that feel different to you? Yeah, it feels different and you kind of look different. All right, well, so what we think you've done today is you've ruptured your ACL. Do you know what an ACL is? No idea. Okay, so um, ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. It's one of the main stabilizing ligaments in the knee. So you've got your thigh bone here and then your shin bone here, so it's a femur and a tibia. And then as you bend your knee, you've got this ligament in behind the kneecap, your anterior cruciate ligament or your ACL. That's what we think you've ruptured. So what the ACL does is it stops the tibia from moving anteriorly or forward on the femur and it also prevents excessive rotation of the joint. Um, so it's typically injured when you're slowing down and you're changing direction. Does that sound like what you were doing when you hurt yourself? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah? yeah. Alrighty. So things that can predispose this is being female, not in your case, having a high BMI, possible anatomical variances in the bone, and being younger, also having a family history. Do you know if your dad or anything did Yeah, his my ACL? uncle Usain did his ACL a little bit ago. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, alrighty. So you've got some of those risk factors in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to refer you off to the surgeon. Hopefully he'll sort you out. Okay. Hi, Will. I'm your surgeon. So I'm just here to discuss a few different surgical options for you. Um, there's a thing which we can call an autograph, which is where we harvest um, a tendon or a ligament from your own body and make an artificial ACL. Well, there's also a thing called an allograft, which is where we get a donor's ACL ligament. So this could be from someone who's recently deceased. Um, which option do you think is best for you? Which one do you recommend, Mon? Look, I've been doing autographs for about 30 years and I've seen some pretty good results, so I think that's probably the best thing to do. Um, I have the most expertise in doing autographs, particularly from the patella tendon. Um, you can also do them from the hamstring tendon as well, but I've got most experience in the patella tendon, so I think that'll be the best for you. So the patella tendon, up here we have the thigh bone and the leg bone. The quadricep muscles actually insert onto the tibia here via the patella tendon, which is this thing here. So what we'll pretty much do is, under general anaesthetic, we'll cut off some of your patella tendon and we'll fold it together to make an artificial ACL and we'll sew it. And then what we'll do is, we'll drill two holes here, one through your leg bone, uh, your thigh bone, and one through your leg bone. And we'll insert the artificial ligament into these two tunnels. And we'll also widen this gap here. This is just to prevent some uh, impingement. 
and then what we'll do is we'll sew it back together and uh, and then what we'll do after we've put the ligament in is we're going to just anchor it to the two bony parts here and then we'll close you back up. Um, we'll also look for any other potential anomalies and clean them up as well. How does that sound? Sounds good, Mum. Yep. So what are the risks, Mum? So in the surgery, there's just general complications of anaesthetic. So you might have an allergic reaction or anything like that. Um, there's also the chance of causing bleeding, um, also spread of infection, as well as causing a thing we call a deep vein thrombosis, which is essentially a blood clot. Um, there's also other complications which might result from the surgery um, after the surgery itself. So this could be that with the two holes that we drill, the holes might not be perfectly in line with the way that your original ligament was and this might cause some biomechanical issues, long term or short term resulting in pain, also increasing your risk of arthritis. However, uh, there also might be complete failure of the graft. Um, this only occurs in about 8% of patients though, so um, it's most likely not going to happen. So what about the long term? So some studies have shown at 6 years post-op, 9-39% to of patients will have significant knee pain and symptoms. Some will actually have to go get another surgery of some sort just to um, fix the ACL again. And only 2% of patients will have a full knee reconstruction. Um, however, the advantages of surgery, 75 to 95% of patients will experience success and return to sport within a year. And with regards to surgery, there's not much time lost. You can actually walk out of surgery the next day or the same day with crutches. So you can start rehab early. Good man. Who needs crutches when you got two hot girls? That's it. Oh, I'm going to see my surgeon now. Well, best of luck. Thanks, yeah, mom. Can I kiss mom? Yes. Oh, well, nice to see you again. How are you feeling after surgery? Yeah, good mom. Good news. Surgery went really well. There was no complication or anything like that. So what we'll do from now is I'm going to refer you back to your osteopath, and we're going to start some extensive rehab, and then I'll see you in about 12 weeks. What we can expect at 12 weeks is that if you do your rehab properly, we'll have better range of motion and better strength in your quads and hammies. How does that sound? Sounds good. How you going, Will? Good, man. How are you? So I heard the surgery was good. Got yeah, the talatanin graft in there and the surgeon has given you some advice. Is that correct? Yeah, man. So for the past two days, I've been doing a racer. Oh, yeah. So rest, ice compression, elevation. Mm -hmm. So I was putting the ice on my knee. Good stuff. That's what we like to hear. Okay. Oh, hopefully that swelling's going down around that knee of yours. Yeah. Yeah, slowly. Well, you'll get there eventually. Um, so that's good that you started that. We'll start getting on to some early stage stuff. So we want to get some range of motion in that knee and deflection in the other way and extension. Um, and so we want to get that done for you. And then from there, we'll move on to some more, we'll call it isometric. So not moving your leg, just twitching that muscle of yours you know, on and off. But we'll explain that as we get into the gym. And then we want to get some cardio as well into. So once you get that range of motion, do some cardio and uh, keep that fitness of yours um, up and going, yeah, because we want to last long in the clubs. Um, and then we we will get into some middle stage stuff. So we're looking at about five months here in or um, around that you know bracket there, four to five months. And this is where we'll start doing some more major based exercises, so some major strengthening, some full range of motion strengthening, and some proprioception in that knee, which is knowing where your knee is, because at the moment you probably don't know where the hell it is. It's probably in Jamaica. So um, yeah, you feel like that, I guess. But um, we'll get that up and going about midway through your rehab, okay? Now towards the end stage, um, this is going like, we're looking at a year here for most people, but if you stick to your rehab well, we'll look at nine months. We're gonna try to get you back into some, you know, obviously you wanna get back into dancing at the club, so um, we wanna get you, yeah, that's the way. Yeah, cool, kill them. And then, so we're getting back into that, so, you know, doing some more functional stuff in the gym. So doing those dance moves in the in the gym and making you confident in your knee that you can do those, yeah? yeah that twisting and that shaking, yeah? yeah. Um, look, and then, you know, some people have setbacks in this, but if you stick to your rehab well and you come see me, you know, weekly and then progress from there, I'm sure we'll get you back up and running in the club scene in no time, all right? Yeah, so um, I'm confident in you. You look like you got good brain in you and you can stick to it, so that's the way you see. Um, yeah, so we'll get you back up and running in no time, alright? Come on. Perfect. Respect.
one eternity later. Work, 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 work. You see me, I be work, 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 work. You see me, do me, dirt, dirt.